All of my suits and most of my clothes are in a storage unit. So here's a picture of me in a tux with former Super Bowl winner, Sean McVay. Oh no, he's hot! What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. John Wick Chapter 4 is going to be in theaters next weekend. But this weekend, I'm going to tell you why I believe this is one of the best action movies in years. Somebody please get this man a gun. John Wick uncovers a path to defeating the high table, but before he can earn his freedom, Wick must face off against a new enemy with powerful alliances across the globe and forces that turn old friends into foes. Shockingly, this movie is rated R for pervasive strong violence and language. When I say this is the most violent and action-packed John Wick movie, you're gonna look at me and say, Austin, how? Feels like they up it from an action perspective in each film, and it feels like they've done everything possible from a gun foo perspective, right? They've already done pretty much everything you can do, so how do you up the ante? How do you make it bigger than it's ever been, more violent than it's ever been, and do something different from a visual perspective, right? I think they take what they did very well in the previous three movies, and they somewhat repeat that formula, but they do it in a way that serves the story and serves its purpose, but also makes each individual action sequence, as long as it lasts, because there are some sequences in this movie that last 15 to 20 minutes long, uh, but each of them are different from the last. And every time you think you're getting the same thing, and I think some people will have an issue with some scenes going on so long to where it feels repetitive, but then you get to a different scene, and it's a different kind of action, right? From John Wick on a horse, to John Wick with swords, to John Wick with nunchucks, to John Wick with guns. And again, those are all things that we've seen before, and we're going to see sequences that feel familiar to previous sequences, but each of them holds something just a little different, and just special enough to where it's going to make each one memorable. Now, this is a three-hour movie. Two hours is long enough! Honestly, that was my biggest and my only hesitation going in. I said, why does this movie need to be three hours? And after watching, it is, I would say, the most expansive John Wick story. There's more going on in this movie than there has been in other films, but I will say the story here is maybe a bit more interesting than some of the stories in the other movies. One thing I loved about the first John Wick is that it was so simplistic. It didn't have to do a ton story-wise to keep you invested. You were just kind of in awe of the action sequences happening. This time, the story is... Well, there's a lot to it. We go to different locations around the globe, we are introduced to brand new characters, so we have to get a bit of backstory on those characters. Every time we cut to the villainous side of things, that's almost a completely separate story happening than what we are kind of focused on with John Wick. But inevitably, not a spoiler, those storylines are going to interconnect in a way, and there are going to be characters here that start to serve more of a purpose as we learn more about them. One in particular, I'll just call him Tracker, or Nobody, played by Shamir Anderson. The more we learn about him, the more I start to really enjoy his character, because at first, there's already like four stories happening, and then we're introduced to him, and I'm like, ah, maybe you're throwing too much at us at once. But once we start to really get a feel for why his character is there, I'm sitting back thinking, I, that's perfect. That is perfection what you're doing with this character but the real uh, newbies here I'll just list a few of them I would say Bill Skarsgård is the one that people are getting excited about because he gets to play uh, a villain and I think he does a great job as a villain you're thinking to yourself well can he handle the action sequences but the role that he plays in this movie serves his skill set very well and I actually found him to be more threatening than I expected but at the same time you see him versus John Wick and you're like okay someone's gonna kick his ass see the real character that packs a punch here and that is Donnie Yen as Kane, and obviously there's going to be an interesting backstory there, there's going to be parts of his character that become more interesting as the story moves, but when he is on screen with John Wick, the chemistry, the lack thereof, everything that they do together is perfection. Austin, the movie's called John Wick. Why don't you talk about John Wick? Well, we know what Keanu Reeves brings to this role. And at this point, I think he is settled into the shtick of being John Wick. He doesn't have much to say. He maybe had, in the first hour of the movie, he said like 15 things. He's not talking very much in this role, but he doesn't have to. He speaks through his physicality. He talks with his fists. People are going to watch this movie and they're going to say, well, yeah, Keanu Reeves is not the best actor in the world, but I disagree because he knows the type of character that he's playing. 
He knows the role that he is in. We look at these 80s and somewhat 90s, but mostly 80s action stars, and we say they were delivering one-liners in the way that they should have. They captured their roles perfectly. They didn't have to say that much because they used physicality to perfect these roles. And that's what Keanu Reeves does because there are action sequences here. And you know you're going to get a stunt double in there, but there are times where I'm looking and I'm like, that that's Keanu Reeves. And you've seen that in the last three movies, but this one specifically, because this one probably has two times the action that, say, the first movie had, and you're thinking, how is he still doing this at his age? It's truly phenomenal. And I was in awe of some of the things he was doing. And you watch the behind-the-scenes videos from knowing how to hold a gun to knowing how to control a gun to uh, knowing exactly when he needs to reload. And that's what I like about these movies is the attention to detail. And some people are going to watch this and they're going to say, well... It gets a little bit outlandish. You have to turn your brain off in certain sequences because how is someone going to get hit by a car that many times? And live! I get it. And I've seen online, well, this is turning into Fast and Furious. This movie is so outlandish. And I'm thinking to myself, well, they established this character as the boogeyman in the first movie. Someone who can survive crazy events and someone who they just can't kill. And there's even a character that says it in this movie. He's like, why can't I just kill you? Why can't you just die? Because John Wick is essentially a hero. I don't want to say a superhero because he doesn't have powers, but a hero in this world that knows how to survive, knows how to win, and just doesn't give up. He is the Baba Yaga. And I think people who are watching this and say, ah, it gets too crazy. Like Baba Yaga. They tell us in the first movie what this guy is. The villain literally goes on like a three-minute monologue and talks about the fact that he is the Baba Yaga, and legend says this man basically just doesn't die. So people who are saying it's getting so far away from the first movie, no, no, it's not. I once saw him kill three men in a bar with a bouncer. It's getting more outlandish, and yes, there are certain times in this movie where I'm saying, okay, could he survive that? But I'm watching it going... I believe he could survive that because the movie puts you in the mindset to where you can suspend disbelief just a bit more with this guy compared to other human beings, but it does not get into Fast and Furious territory. I, what, the, what are you talking about? You what? Here's the difference between John Wick and we'll just say a franchise like that. Here we look at the writing, the characters, the depth the development, the attention to detail, knowing the type of movie and the type of world that you are establishing, interesting opposition, utilizing the technical side of things to enhance the story, right? Because these stories, you know, we've seen these types of stories before, but it's all about how you enhance the experience and on a technical side of things, right? Not going all out with CGI, spending $200 million on the visual effects. No, stunt work, choreography, attention to detail within the fight sequences, having the camera move in a way to where it captures those movements so beautifully, you can see almost everything going on. I'm not sitting back complaining about shaky cam in this movie. And there are a couple of fight sequences that had shaky cam, but the majority of them you can see everything happening, and maybe there's a time or two where you see the hand miss the face, and you're like, okay, obviously that was a fake punch, or Keanu Reeves is moving a bit slower in this sequence, but my god, he's attaching his legs to dudes and flipping them over his head, and I understand a lot of that was the stunt double, but Keanu Reeves still probably did it more than once. That's the type of of stunt work that I want to see. If this movie doesn't win stunt ensemble or whatever it is for SAG, that'll be ridiculous. If this movie doesn't make the Oscars sit back and go, well, maybe, maybe we need a category for stunts. Heck, I would nominate this movie for cinematography. I know it won't happen. Like Roger Deakins said about the Batman the other day, he's like, ah, it's because snobbery. That's what he said, right? They're too snobby to look at a movie like John Wick and not nominate it for cinematography. If that happens, it will be warranted and deserved at this point in the year, right? Maybe there's five movies that are better. Maybe I'll understand. But at this point in the year, the shots in cinematography here are outstanding, guys. There is a fight sequence where the camera moves with their characters and then starts to move to where you are looking down at what is happening on the ground, it never cuts, 
and it goes on for about five minutes. It almost feels like you're watching a video game. I know that sounds like a negative, but I mean that in the most positive way possible. It's one of the coolest looking fight sequences I've ever seen in my life. And when the camera came back down, I said, no, 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 go back, go back. I could use 20 minutes. I could watch this for hours. I could watch that fight sequence for an hour and not get bored. It was unbelievable. Wow. I could see how some people will watch this and have two major issues with this movie. I'm not going to talk about the, the unrealistic element, the Fast and Furious. I'm not going to talk about that because I don't care about that criticism. I don't care. The two issues that I could see is the movie is too long and some of the fight sequences, not all of them, are slightly repetitive. They go on and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. So in that way, I could see you watching this movie and saying, well, it might just be too action heavy and not enough story. But I thought there was enough story in this movie to go around, so I can't really look at that as a big complaint. And then you have the length of the movie. And sometimes when it's long, it's hard. That's what she said. <laughs> to get through. It's hard to get through. But I actually didn't really feel the three-hour runtime with this film. I did slightly feel like it was overlong, and maybe the movie could have worked at 2.30 or 2.20 or, heck, even two hours, but then you would have had to trim out some of the fight sequences, and I'm like, I want to see John Wick on a horse or in a car or with nunchucks. The movie's also more emotional than I expected. I mean, I had an emotional attachment to certain storylines and certain sequences that uh, maybe I haven't had in the other films, and they will introduce things in this movie, and you're thinking to yourself, I could see that story as, like, a spin-off. So I think doors are open for this movie to go in different directions post John Wick 4. I don't know where this world is going exactly, but post John Wick 4 should be interesting. That being said, we're talking about a satisfying experience with John Wick 4. I don't know how fans of this franchise are going to watch this movie and not be at least satisfied. But beyond that, have the best time ever on a big IMAX theater. That's where I watch it. Every punch is impactful and incredible, and the sound design is monumental, but then you go a step further than that, I don't see a lot of people watching this and not having a kick-ass time in the theater. And that, for me, is all I needed from John Wick Chapter 4, and that's what I got. Before I give you my score, and I need your comments down below, what is the best movie of this franchise so far? And if you guys want to support this video and help out this channel, dropping that thumbs up would be the best way to do that. I'm not begging. I'm begging. John Wick 4 is visually stunning and epic beyond belief. Not only is this the best movie of the year so far, but it will go down as one of the most technically impressive action movies of all time. While a little lengthy, this is a non-stop rush of adrenaline. Fans will be satisfied, and this may just be the best movie in the franchise so far. So let me know your thoughts on John Wick Chapter 4 down below. I know Shazam's coming out this weekend. I promise I'm going to have a Shazam review for you guys probably tomorrow, and then maybe Shadow and Bone Season 2. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment, man. Just keep leaving those comments. They're helping the channel. They really are, so I appreciate it. Stay tuned. we got some really cool things in the works. Next weekend, I'll be in Cleveland with Sean Chandler and the flick pick if you live in ohio you're gonna want to come see us i'll see you soon they tell stories to children to frighten them 